Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to dive into one of the more um, tedious <laughs> and uh, kind of technical aspects of modeling and specifically texturing, and that is UV unwrapping and UV editing. And so to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to just create a cube. We're going to leave it just as a primitive right now. Um, we're going to go to our material manager. Again, we've been doing all of this in Redshift, so just if you aren't sure if, you're red, if Redshift is currently the active renderer, you can always edit your render settings and just make sure that right up here it says Redshift. Okay, so I'm going to create a material, um, just a base material. I'm going to drop it on the cube. And what we've been really doing to this point is doing procedural things or making materials that apply to the entire surface of the object. Now, or occasionally we've selected, maybe done a selection of polygons and applied a material in just that one section. So we're going to go ahead and um, look at kind of a bit more about how textures work and how they're applied to a surface. And in doing so, um, then we will look at how we can have more control over where something ends up on the surface of an object when we're making a texture. So I've added this material, and I'm going to go ahead and double click on it. I'm going to open up the node editor, and I just want to create a texture node that I can put in here so I can load images as um, my texture file. So I'm going to double click, type in TEX. Wait for this to load, and I'm going to go to Texture, and double click, and then connect the out color to the in color of the base. And then what I need to do is I need to choose an image. I'm pretty sure I have a headshot of Bob Ross in here somewhere, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find him, because he needs, he needs to just be part of this. There he is. Look at that. Beautiful. I actually have a lot of headshots. It's all the same headshots. It's from old tutorials, but I, yeah, I have a lot of Bob in my life. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put Bob Ross's face on there. You can use any image you want for this, but ideally it's something that's representational and if it's repeating on multiple surfaces, you're going to notice, right? That's what we're trying to do is to show um, the default state of these things. Okay, so I've got that set. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And immediately you're going to see that Bob is on every surface of this cube. Right? Every single face has Bob's face on it. Um, and so the question is, what's going on here? Why is this the way that this functions? Well, by default, if we go ahead and go to our UV edit mo um, layout up here, you'll see that we get this these two different panes. One, this is our texture UV editor. And the other one is right our normal viewport. And so you'll see there's this thing and it says zero to one and right over here. This is a texture and on when things are processed on the GPU, which is where all these textures are processed, um, instead of having um, a traditional pixel value, granted the image we're loading in there does have a traditional pixel value, right? This, I don't even know how big this image is, but it's some square image. Um, Textures that you load into the GPU um, are going basically are it's like a floating point number from zero to one to tell you where in the position um, your image is right. So you start off zero zero here, you go to one one, and that's just the way that that textures work. And so um, what we need to do over here is we might be able to click on this arrow and go to texture, and no, it just has these two options here, and I don't think we'll actually see that laid out, but this is a really useful one. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to, let's see here, texture, can we load here? No, I have to go to file, and we're gonna say open texture, and we wanna find the same one. So I'm just gonna type Bob again, and it's one of these PNGs, I'm gonna open this up. Okay, so I want you to notice a couple of things, right? First, now that I've loaded this in here, Bob is, right, not square. Uh, and so we can see that there's distortion happening on the surface, right? Because our base image that we're using isn't does not have square dimensions, and so it's getting stretched on the surface of our cube. 
right? But it does fill in and it basically adapts to whatever dimensions this image was. So it's saying, oh, well, whatever the width was, that's still one. And whatever the height was, that's still one at the tallest point. Um, and then it just smushes it into a square to fit onto each one of these surfaces. And so what's happening is with UVs and with textures, what, what's being done is Cinema 4D and I believe every other texturing and modeling software out there is projecting this image, this 2D image onto this 3D surface, right? You can imagine, right, if, if we had a uh, projector and we had an image of Bob on it and we just had a cube <laughs> in front of it, right, we'd be projecting on that surface. Now, the thing is that with the way that it projects um, by default in this case is that it's projecting essentially in six directions at once, right? But what that, but what's actually happening is instead of this having like say six projectors going at all these different sides, what's what's actually happening is that all of the UVs, which are basically the, um, uh, it's like a it's like the polygons on the surface, but it's meant for textures, and they map one to one to the polygons. Um, the UVs are all overlaid, right? You can imagine if this cube was folded flat, right? If if all the sides have been cut apart and they're just sort of stacked together on top of each other, what's happening is then Bob is being projected through all of those different layered sides. The six sides of this cube are flat on top of each other. Bob's being projected through there. And then, right, that's what we're seeing in the screen. And so what UV unwrapping is, is when we go ahead and we actually, um, sometimes it will work automatically, like with a cube, there's certain projections we can do that will make this um, just automatically function. Um, but what it, but what we do is we just, we say, these are where we want this cut to be, right? You can imagine if you had, like if you've ever done paper craft or anything like that, right? We're trying to unwrap this sort of like the peel on an orange, right? We're trying to unwrap this three-dimensional surface in a way where we can lay it out and make it a two-dimensional, overlay it on a two-dimensional surface and have that texture mapped back onto this surface, right? If you watch, you know, in, like people doing like car wraps, things like that, it's the same idea, right? You're trying to take something that's two-dimensional and wrap it onto a three-dimensional object. And so you are, you're gonna get some distortion depending on the object, but the idea with UV unwrapping is that we, in a very controlled way, try and minimize the warping and distortion that happens while maximizing the amount of control we have in terms of where things are on a particular object. So we went over the basics and now it is time to actually look at how we can start to use these tools. So to start with, we've got our cube and you'll note that there is this UV manager down here. If I click on any of these right now, all the options are grayed out. And that's because in order for us to be able to edit and manipulate these UVs, we cannot be using a primitive, right? We need to be using something that has a UVW tag. And the way we get that tag, and you've seen these before because anytime we create, make something editable, we're going to get that tag. So in our case, we are going to go ahead and just say we've got our cube. Let's go ahead, we're gonna leave it all very, very simple for now. We're gonna just leave our segments X, Y, and Z set to one. We're not gonna fillet it or anything. All we're gonna do is make it editable. So we can hit C on the keyboard, right? Or you can use any of the other options to make it editable. And um, so as soon as I do that, you'll see that, right, it shows me that it's a polygon object. And I also get this little uh, checkerboard icon over here, which is the UVW tag. Now that this has a UVW tag, you'll note that automatically all of these options are now available to us. And so the, um, the first thing that we want to do is we want to look at like what the heck are all these different projections? What does this mean? And then we can start to work our way through this material. So to start with these, we're gonna start with the projection tab. 
right? And there's a couple different ways we can do it. And you'll notice there's a set UVW from projection up here as well, which we will be using later. Um, but so these are the kind of the default different types of projections that you can use um, that especially for simple objects like a cube or say a sphere or cylinder are often very useful um, and are all that you need to do in order to make this easier to work with. So in our case, if we click on the, if we click on frontal, what I want you to note is that now my, <laughs> one, Bob's peeking at us over here, um, but two, I'm basically getting this like kind of three-dimensional representation of the faces of this over here. But each one of these is a UV, and what we're, what frontal does is, right, if I go back to my textures here, since I've already loaded Bob into my system here, he should be down here as an option now. Right, so you can see what frontal does is it's a frontal projection from the point of view of the camera. Um, we are getting this projection where our UVs are mapped to that part of Bob's face. And there you can see they're like distorted and smeared, right? But that what that does is it's allowing this to be a very flat projection of his face on this three-dimensional surface. Now, if I come over to my UVs over here, and if I switch from model mode to polygon mode, um, you'll note that now I can actually come in here and select these individual polygons. Now I can't rotate this in 3D space because, right, that's not possible. And each one of these faces is actually overlapping, right? So if we were looking at the bottom of the image, it would actually be overlapped with this top, at, top part right here. But with UVs, one of the things you can do is if I just double click, um, I can select this whole UV island, which is basically a group of UVs. Now, eventually we're gonna be splitting things up and they're gonna be in different pieces, but the, it's a really useful tool. But then all the move ex tools and rotate and scale and all of that, we can use directly. So I have the move tool selected. So if I just click and drag, right, I can now move this around and I can kind of control <laughs> where Bob's face is on this cube. And you can see, right, there's some distortion happening and things because, right, we're projecting him, you know, we're doing this weird forced perspective <laughs> um, 3D object that we're then placing this 2D surface on, right? I can rotate this. So if I click rotate and then I just click and drag, it's gonna rotate his face and that looks kind of creepy, right? But it's not really rotating his face, it's rotating the UVs um, in relation to his face on the texture. Now you'll note I can go off the edges there, which if I do that, and I can't, know, I don't know if we'll be able to see it, it's probably actually right here, right? We're actually losing some of that image, like it's disappearing because we're outside of the frame of our texture. I'm gonna go ahead and undo at least the rotation. So we've done frontal, let's go ahead and do flat. So what flat does is it's going to basically project him on, um, it's going to be a flat projection. I don't know how else to describe that. But what that means is it's like we have one projector and it's projecting his image this direction. I want you to note that, right, we have, we have Bob there, then we have a bunch of smearing and then we have Bob on the other side, right? And you'll note that he is essentially backwards because he's being projected right through this surface. And this smearing is because in the flat projection, surfaces that are not um, uh, perpendicular to the, the camera in this texture view are gonna be on edge. So we can't see them, but these polygons are just lined up on the edges, right? You can imagine we're looking straight at one face of this this object, and then we're getting these. That's why we have the smear here, and if I rotate the view around, we should get, right, that's his shirt, one little band of pixels of his shirt smeared across this entire surface. So that's the flat projection. This can be really useful in certain cases if you are doing something where you want symmetry. Um, I saw a tutorial the other day that was pretty great, but it was showing how to model a a football helmet, um, but instead of UV unwrapping anything, um, he used a flat projection uh, and just had the the logo for the team, and it was just basically like pasted on one side and 
essentially symmetrically on the other side, right? Really useful for that. And he didn't have any edge pixels that had any color. It was transparent around the background. So, or it was the same color as the base material for the helmet. And so that, um, so he didn't have any smearing that you could notice, um, but he did have these, these two images. So there's certain times when, if you want something on both sides of an object symmetrical, symmetrically, this can work really well. Or if only one surface is facing the camera, this can also be a really useful projection, right? If, if we're not going to see the edges, we're not going to see anything else. Um, this can be a really great way to, to work. Um, if we go to sphere, <laughs> you'll see that things get a little bit weird and I'm going to zoom out a touch. Um, and because this is a cube and we're doing it in spherical mode, it doesn't really look right. We'll look at what happens when you do a sphere later. If I click on cylinder, um, again, this is going to be really distorted, but both of these are meant to be better for projecting um, spheres or cylinders. If I go to box, this is one of the formats that <laughs> I may... <laughs> Sorry, that just makes me laugh. Um, but this is right one of the formats that right if you were to UV unwrap a cube, this is the way that most people would do it. Right, you have your six sides, and you can imagine how these fold up together to make this cube. Right now, there are these cubic and cubic two. You can see that cubic is basically the default way it was being projected to start with. Cubic two is um, similar to box. I don't honestly know it, what the specific differences are. It may be that one does a little bit better job in certain edge cases than the other, and it's something that I should probably research and find out, but I haven't really looked it up. Okay, so now what's nice about this, right, we don't necessarily, right, this isn't the end goal, but you can imagine, right, if we wanted, say, a, like, I don't know, a, a box of something like a box of cereal or something like that. And we wanted like one pane to have the front of the box, right? One pane to have the top, the bottom, and then the three, you know, the two sides with like this information and then the back, right? We can, now we could take this and we could make an image where we would be able to map the needed assets to these different places so that they could align. Now we could also go in, you could go into Photoshop, you could go into, um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, it's a drawing program. So you could also go into Photoshop, Procreate, Krita, whatever, you could bring um, an image and we're gonna look at how to apply a UV mesh to a texture in cinema. Um, but you could use that, you could apply that UV mesh so you know where those lines are as a layer. You bring that into one of your imaging programs and you can go ahead and arrange things there. You can paint, you can do all sorts of stuff. So if this was something where there's maybe some, some damage or discoloration or washes of color or something like that in some of these other panes, um, Right, you can you can do that. You have a lot more control of where things go and how they're applied to this surface. Right. And this is just the very basic, just doing the default projections. Sometimes this is all you need. But then when you start thinking about more complex objects, like if you look around your desk or around where you're working right now, and you start thinking about how, you know, how do you unwrap, you know, <laughs> whatever it is you need to unwrap. There's plenty of objects around me right now that um, would be more challenging, even including the hard drive that this is being saved to is like an oval shaped external hard drive. And I would need to, I know that the UV unwrapping would not work very well for me in this case. Okay, so these are the basics. Um, we're gonna look at some of these other options and UV packing and all of that. Um, in the next section, but I just wanted to give a very basic of introduction of what UVs are and how um, they can be useful to us to do this unwrapping.